Sailing is one of the last places where there are no rules. It's all up to you what you want to do. You can go out and, you know, you can blow out your sails if you feel like it. You know, you're, you're responsible for your own actions. Even on the racetrack, be it motorbike or car, there are rules on the racetrack too. Um, you know, that twisty B-road feeling when you get back and you put the keys on the table after a nice drive, you know, that's satisfying, you know, you feel like that itch has been scratched. Well, you can do that all day, every day in a boat and you can take your friends and you can live on it. Really interesting mix of things. Well, what if you're the kind of person, if you want a limousine or a Maybach style with the performance, you're probably gonna go for one of these. But if you're the kind of person that feels like you're a GT3 racer, you're probably gonna go for something like in the next episode and the series of three episodes coming up now. So I've been offered to scrutinize and day sail this boat from the shipyard. Never been offered that before, so I leaped at the opportunity. I hope you enjoy. Damien, thanks very much for uh, inviting us down. Okay. And it's quite exciting for us because um, we're in the sailing mecca, Lorient. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background? I come from the aerospace business. So I, okay. First of all, I, I, was, uh, I was building um, rockets, rockets. Okay. So um, it's defense in the defense industry. Defense industry okay. and, and civilian rockets, so okay, RM6. Wow. What, what compelled you to, to get in, into the, you know, the naval sector from aerospace, if you don't mind me asking? Sure, That's yeah, okay. yeah, no, no it's, 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 it's funny. Actually, the, uh, the, the story is a bit crazy. Um, I, I've always been keen to be an astronaut since I'm a kid. I decided to quit the aerospace business to, um, to get my own business. Yeah. Um, and, and after some, some, some thinking and some, you know, wandering around, um, I figured out that there was once one business which was very similar, but simpler, a lot simpler than the aerospace business, which is the offshore sailing business. Okay. It's pretty much the same. Right? When you look at, when you look into it, when you're uh, out there in the ocean, the middle of the ocean, sure. it's exactly the same that when you are in space, yeah. you're on your own. Yeah. The only thing you have with you is what you brought with you. Right. You have to rely on your, you know, on your platform, on the device you're, you're, you're relying on. And, and, and if there is a problem, there is no way, there is no quick way home. You have to wait <laughs> and right. to, 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 to take care of what's going on. And if you're hurt, my is not, it's not there. Right. So you, you have to, to that's deal interesting. With so, so if I was to recap there, that you would say self-reliance, um, dependability. Yeah. Um, and planning, those planning. would all be three yeah. three key things. That's redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. Okay. And, and smart engineering, simple, reliable smart engineering. And I know from you know from a bit of the research that I did before, kind of you, you really respect Ch Colin Chapman of Lotus. Yeah. And and his his ethos. Just remind me what Colin Chapman said. Uh, if I'm not sure, I put it right. But so for, excuse me if it's not the uh, the exact uh, the exact same. I think he said um, simplify and then add lightness, yeah. simplify and then add lightness. To me, in terms of engineering, in, in, terms, in terms of design, that's the key. The paradox is that um, having the lightness and the simplicity means it's, main, it's, it's actually a faster boat. Exactly. And, and um, I've noticed you know, from the boats that you've done, they seem to be winning a lot of races. Um, so your intention, and I think that's very interesting, is that you, you're building, your agenda from the outset is to build fast cruising boats, which people ironically are also taking racing. And I think that's really what a lot of the racing, you know, people that are casual racers are actually end up buying your boats. So the approach is slightly different. We think about sailing first, and this comes from our, you know, offshore racing DNA. We, have, we don't build racing boats, but we did build racing boats in the past in Marston Company. And we are fully, you know, uh, within this, um, the, this, this ecosystem of offshore sailing here in La Base, in, uh, in Lorient. We are fully in, in the mecca of offshore sailing, I should say. So we are fully inspired by that. And we take all the experience of what it is to sail offshore for a long time and to save fast with performance and safety, etc. We take all these together and try to bring to a, a, a regular cruising guy all the experience and all the, uh, the, the design thinking that's been done within this to provide you with the best selling experience while cruising. 
that, that seems to me, that seems quite like, that's a magical recipe for me and, and a magical formula. So you're basically, you have the know-how and you're also building uh, race boats with your composite know-how. So the racing guys come to you, ask you, say, listen, we have this design, we'd like you to build this. So you, you're clearly um, well known for your ability in the composite building, in the racing boats. You're taking that know-how and basically building a cruising boat and, 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 and as a result, it will be a very robust one. Uh, for instance, also the, uh, for the electronics, uh, we, uh, most of our customers pick up NK, NKE. So NKE. Which, that... is, uh, which equips most of the uh, racing boats also. And NKE is a company which is some, something like five kilometers away from here. Right. Performance is not only going fast. Performance, in, when you talk about offshore racing, performance is more about steadiness. And robustness and robustness reliability. Robustness, yeah. reliability. Being able to, to, to sail constantly at 15 knots reliably, yes. rather than sailing for, I don't know, four hours, 30, 45 knots. Okay. That's the difference. Well, as an offshore and, and sailor, that's very interesting because high average speeds are, are the route to success yeah. on long passages. Yeah. And that's very interesting. And as an owner operator for me, I have to say, that's something that I think in the whole industry as, as a whole, um, you know, a lot of people are trade wind sailing, which is fine, but they'll generally stop at ports and be doing a lot of repairs. Yeah. And I think it's an owner operator, um, and it's good seamanship anyway, to have to try and search out robust equipment so you're not spending your whole time repairing something. So I have to say, everything you're saying sounds quite attractive from a, you know, from an offshore sailor's perspective. So good. I'd quite like to have a look at some of your boats. Let me just clarify, you have Marston and Composites is the manufacturing house. Exactly. And from the manufacturing house, you've then created your own brand of boats, and that's called ORC, yeah. is that right? Yeah. So that's Ocean Rider Catamarans, isn't exactly. that right? Yeah. Okay. And so I think you have three models, isn't that yeah. right? So you have, you have a 42, is that exactly. right? Uh, is it a 52? A 50. A 50. Yeah. And then you have, so it's exactly 50 foot? Or is it the model is the 52? Well, the 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 the, the, uh, the side is 50, but we have um, we can add some skirts at, at the rib, which makes it 52 length. And then you've just released the 57, yeah, which is exactly. which is one boat that I have to say really caught my attention. There's a lot of innovation on this boat. Can I ask um, on this 57? Um, it's when was your first 57 launched? Uh, we launched it in February this year. Okay, and um, can I ask who who designed it? So the designer is a Marc Lombard, Marc Lombard design office. Marc Lombard, okay. The, um, those guys have been designing uh, cruising cats for years, but also lots, lots of uh, racing boats. Well, I have to say, it's quite, from, from, from what I've seen online, she, she definitely looks like a goer. So I'm, I'm obviously pretty excited. Myself and Eva are pretty excited to be going off and uh, have the pleasure of a day sale. So it's very kind, Damien. Thank you very much for, sure, yeah. for, for letting us. It's a pleasure so, from, for me to host you. So, well, weather they're really well and packed as well, very well immediately, but all of this is top of the line uh, equipment, even from Dyneema, but one thing that's really screaming at me is these beautiful, beautiful carbon furlers. My goodness, this is top of the line kit, carbon version as well.
that's, yeah. that's where all the kids here started by doing that before doing the off-road racing. It's they did many uh, mini transats on that. Incredible. So now we are safe. Wow. Look at that. That's quite it's immediately impressive. It it feels it feels for me it feels very like the Neil. You know, it's the same comfort. And what you notice is that the, the windward hull is significantly less in the water. So we're, we're nearly, nearly raising a hull at the moment. My goodness. This is the in hauler on the on the J2. Sure, sure. My God, and the difference in the sail trim. Just immediately, you feel it on board. You feel as soon as the sail trim is right, bang, then you feel the power. Picks up on it like lightning. 